Hi, everybody. This is uh, Silvio Canto in Dallas, uh, Texas, on Monday, February the 17th. Happy President's Day. And that's going to be our topic today as we look at President's Day. You know, it wasn't long ago. I don't remember exactly when they changed it, but it was February 22nd was Washington's birthday. And February 12th was Lincoln's birthday. So we used to actually celebrate two days in February. And again, I don't know exactly when they changed it, but they made it the third Monday of February. So now we celebrate President's Day instead of celebrating uh, Washington or Lincoln. And I kind of like it. I kind of like it because President's Day, the one thing about President's Day, at least if you take the time uh, to, to look into it, it's an excellent day to go back and read about presidents. Now, one of the problems uh, with, with President's Day is that we tend to focus on the ones that we remember, the ones that you know were presidents when we were around. It's an inevitable bias. Uh, you know, we, we don't spend a lot of time thinking about, let's say, uh, Grover Cleveland from the 1880s or James Garfield from that time. Those are presidents that, you know, we know they're part of the 45 men who've been president, but we don't focus as much on them as we tend to focus on the ones that, uh, that we remember or voted for in some cases or voted against in, in, other, in other cases. So I tend to look at the presidents in this fashion. You basically have two who I think stand out above all of them, and they're Lincoln and Washington. Washington because he put the country together, really, in many ways. Without Washington, I don't believe the American experience would have succeeded. And then, of course, Lincoln holding the country together in the Civil War. So those two sort of stand out at the very top of the list. Then in the next tier, uh, I would put FDR and Reagan, two of the great communicators of the 20th century. So that's kind of how I break them up, you know, uh, Lincoln, Washington, and then I would go Reagan, FDR, let's say, in the 20th century. Now here more recently, I've begun to read a little bit about three men who I think uh, will be considered great presidents down the road. The first one is Truman, uh, who obviously had to, you know, bring down World War II and, and then Korea. And in many ways, there was the Truman Doctrine that uh, set the foreign policy of the United States in motion for much of the 50 years of the Cold War. The other one is Eisenhower, who followed Truman. And he, he was a real steady hand, uh, a man who, you know, didn't make a lot of noise. He sort of had a grandfather image. But nevertheless, he was a man of tremendous serenity and a man of tremendous integrity. And I think he was exactly what the country needed after the hectic 1940s of, you know, World War II and, and Korea. So he was very much a man for that uh, time. And I think as time passes, he gets better and better. More recently, I'm going to put George, George W. Bush on the list. I know that it's still very recent to look at his presidency. You normally you wait 25 or 30 years. George W. Bush had to deal with some very serious problems. You had the attack on 9-11 and having to literally rebuild our intelligence community and, and fight terrorism. And I thought he did a great job. He did a fantastic job doing that. So I think as time passes, I think he will look uh, a lot better as well. So that's my little President's uh, Day report card. Again, I would really encourage you to read about them. They're fascinating people. You know, think of 45 men who have been in that office, uh, just an incredible uh, group of people and uh, not that many men when you consider the millions of men who have lived in the United States. Thank you for watching. Uh, we have all of these on YouTube, on Twitter, and on my blog. And if today is your birthday, happy birthday. Bye-bye, everybody.